you've outlined how important the media sources are to Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. Basically, any, I guess, fact or statement has to be supported by some source which is accepted in Wikipedia, right? And you said that the... If it's non-obvious, there's, yeah, there's certain things you can say without a source, but yes. And that those sources have been pruned uh, considerably over the years. Yes, the number of sources seems to have been narrowed down quite a bit on ideological grounds. Basically, you're, you're arguing you, Wikipedia is a great source for the establishment perspective, but if you don't want that, you have to go somewhere else. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. Okay. Didn't used to be that way, but yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's also really interesting to me uh, that, you know, for example, on Facebook, uh, very often when you, um, you know, type in one of those hot links uh, so, and so forth, and there isn't a page associated with that person or topic, it's the Wikipedia page that will come up. As, and, then, and similarly in Google, uh, the Wikipedia pages rank incredibly highly, I guess expectedly, because it's one of the top 10 websites in the world, but also kind of get this special treatment, right, mm -hmm. in Google, as if it were more authoritative. Right. Right. So it, it goes quite a bit beyond Wikipedia, the giant, you know, social media apparatus, the, the search engine that most people use globally. Sure. I mean, Apple, for example, will push Wikipedia articles when you ask it uh, certain kinds of questions. Um, Wikipedia has been, I don't know if it still is today, but I, uh, they've been used as sort of background articles uh, beneath um, YouTube videos, sure, and and uh, yes, clearly it, it's pushed a lot by Google. To what extent um, that is a policy of the corporation as opposed to just a reflection of how their algorithms work, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna opine. Um, but um, it, it, it probably doesn't matter very much. Right. So, yeah. so, so there's. I guess what I'm getting at is there's there's a lot of uh, <laughs> the the Wikipedia perspective is a very powerful and wide-reaching perspective. Yep. And that has a profound impact, it seems to me, on how we understand the truth around us and knowledge and everything else. So Wikipedia has been constructing its own reality for a long time. It's uh, sharing a, an establishment reality today, but it wasn't always. Back in 2006, uh, Stephen Colbert famously coined a term wikiality, right? And um, I don't think he was that happy with Wikipedia at the time. He was mocking it. And a lot of people were mocking it because it was a new thing and everybody thought it was weird that there was this thing called an encyclopedia that anybody could edit, which was true back then. It really isn't true today. I don't know that Stephen Colbert really liked some of the perspectives that he was seeing in Wikipedia at the time because it was more neutral back then. I have a feeling that Stephen Colbert likes wikiality now. I'd like to ask him that. So, but the question about having, you, I mean, basically the argument here is that the attempt at having a successful open source or open content encyclopedia seems to have failed. You're making that claim. I'm not saying that they're all doomed to failure, not by Oh, any. okay, not necessarily all. No. Okay. Why, why I think so, yeah. I think that um, what we have learned is that Wikipedia is and always was going to be uh, centralized simply because it's a single website and has one article um, on each topic. It was always going to be difficult, at the very least, for such a, a resource to fairly represent all points of view. 
what ought to exist, uh, essentially, is a new kind of network that reaches out um, and brings together articles on the same topic from lots of different sources and makes them equally available, perhaps similarly um, formatted. But it needs to be a, a decentralized sort of network. In other words, I'm not talking about a new project, a new platform, right, that could be dominated by some new group. I'm talking about a, a truly decentralized, leaderless, centerless network, kind of like um, blogs. Together, they make a thing called the blogosphere, right? Um, and one reason why there is no Jimmy Wales or, or Mark Zuckerberg or Jack Dorsey of the blogosphere is that it uses a standard. It's a technical standard that allows anybody with a blog to take their blogging data and move it somewhere else to a different platform or whatever. Uh, RSS, right, is what you're talking about here? What's that? You're talking about RSS here? That's correct. I'm yeah. talking about RSS and Atom. That's really essential to, so the existence of that technical standard is essential to the blogosphere being as decentralized, that's the word, as it is. So I think we, basically there ought to be a standard for encyclopedias. Perhaps there should be standards for other categories of content, right? And then we should make it easy to distribute uh, encyclopedic content according to that standard. And then we can imagine lots of different apps essentially aggregating the content from different sources and having multiple different collections of encyclopedia articles, all of them being, to get back to your question, open content, right? So um, there's no reason, there's nothing about uh, an open source or open content encyclopedia that is doomed to failure. Mm. It's just this particular dominant instance of, of the idea. In 20 years, uh, I think possibly Wikipedia will be just one of many influential encyclopedias that are all interlinked and made available according to a common standard.